And we welcome in CBS Sports senior NFL insider Jonathan Jones, who joins us from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Jonathan, we've uh, got to start with Mac Jones and his 2022 preseason debut. Bill Belichick been complimentary about Jones's improvement from year one to year two in training camp. What are they saying now after his first performance against the Panthers? Yeah, well, Bill Belichick doesn't say too much. And so, but listen, first two series, first two drives out here for this New England Patriots offense, it was not very good. And it was especially not very good because this was a first string offense for the most part going up against the Carolina Panthers second string defense and uh, their first drive ended in a three and out where you had a good strong Damian Harris run for six yards and then uh, you had a drop as a bit of a bad ball by uh, Mac Jones to Devontae Parker and then uh, there was a sack but you saw what the Patriots had been looking for from Mac Jones. They've been really testing out the deep ball a lot during training camp, really all of this preseason. And they were able to connect on one to Nelson Aguilar right here. It was a beautiful, beautiful pass from Mac Jones, 40 plus yards. And I don't think that he could have handed the ball to Nelson Aguilar any better than the way he threw him that football. That was a big confidence booster and confidence builder for this team, feeling really good. And in the first quarter, it was not looking very good for this Patriots first string offense. But then after the, the quarter break, as they were finding their groove, that was something they could really build on moving forward. Yeah, and there's a lot of question with the Patriots, not just about Mac Jones entering year two with the team, but really about the whole offense and basically the offensive coaching. I know you tried to ask Bill Belichick about the offensive coordinator and play calling situation. You know what? I won't even try to explain it. Here's how it went. Understanding you don't want to tell us much about the offensive play calling situation here. Never Have said that. <laughs> I mean, don't put words in my mouth. I never said that. I, I'm not quoting you. I'm just gleaning. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, just trying to get the record straight here. <laughs> naturally. How aware or not aware are your offensive players about this process? I don't know. I guess them. Well, that was, I mean, that was that very was, Belichickian, um, yes. <laughs> Listen, but he was smiling, and I appreciated the smiles. Listen, it was, um, it was a fun exchange, and, and Bill has been uh, kind of oddly smiley this preseason, uh, certainly in these exhibitions with the media. You know, he's not giving away much. Everybody wants to know whether it's going to be Matt Patricia or Joe Judge installed as the offensive coordinator. It does not appear that he's going to list an offensive coordinator, certainly by title. And part of the reason for that could be because he doesn't feel that anyone deserves that title. Or part of the reason might be that according to the PFWA rules in the NFL, if you have an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator, that that person has to speak to the media every week. Well, if you don't have an offensive coordinator, that person doesn't have to speak to the media every week. So, um, so far what we have seen, the majority has been Matt Patricia calling plays, seemingly calling plays in. Joe Judge has worked a little bit with the third team, and during practice he's worked a little bit with the first team. And this is all very unique, very interesting. Normally, I don't think that we've ever seen this before on an offensive side. However, the Patriots' defensive players are a little used to it because the last couple of years – they haven't had a defensive coordinator. And so it's been a Steve Belichick. It's been a Jeremy Mayo. It's been a Bill Belichick. And whether someone is calling that play into the guy with the green dot on the back of his helmet, you know, it's still been a bit of a collaborative process, a coordinator by committee, if you will. And so are the Patriots doing this on offense? Perhaps. Or maybe they're trying things out, seeing how things go before ultimately installing a consistent play caller uh, week one and beyond. But uh, as you could tell, obviously, Bill Belichick not giving anything away. Well, speaking of trying things out and seeing how they go, the Panthers decided to sit both Baker Mayfield, the presumed QB1, and Sam Darnold. So in essence, we were watching P.J. Walker and Matt Corral alternate with a roster spot hanging in the balance, which is actually kind of cool for week two of the preseason. The problem is Matt Corral might have come away with an injury. What's the latest on that? Yeah, so Matt Corral injured his left foot when someone stepped on it there late in the fourth quarter. Matt Corral was supposed to be playing throughout the entire fourth quarter. P.J. Walker came in, and so it was difficult to tell how serious it was, but I saw him as I was waiting in the bowels of Gillette Stadium here, had a boot on his left foot, had a crutch under his right arm, 
walking very, very gingerly. Uh, he got some x-rays. The Panthers aren't giving any sort of official update on his foot. But look, Matt Corral is a rookie who struggled mightily uh, against Washington last week. Out here tonight, I thought he played much better against Washington. He was dealing with a lot of nerves uh, with Washington, and Washington was blitzing him a lot. So that was very difficult for him. I thought that he was a much calmer quarterback out here in his second preseason game. But now the Carolina Panthers have a real decision to make here because you're not going to carry four quarterbacks on your roster. You're going to have uh, Baker Mayfield. You're going to have Sam Darnold. And if Matt Corral is legitimately injured for some time, well, actually the Carolina Panthers could stash him on the injured reserve, and that could preserve him on their team. They wouldn't want to put him on the practice squad because then you'd have to expose him to waivers. Some team could come in and claim him. You don't want to do that when you spin a draft pick and, uh, and spin a couple of draft picks in order to get him. So this may be the way that the Carolina Panthers can ultimately redshirt him, especially after uh, a first month here of the preseason where you probably wanted just a little bit better of a showing from him. All right, Patriots defeat the Panthers in Foxborough, CBS Sports Senior NFL Insider Jonathan Jones with us. Thanks so much, Jonathan. Team comparison, not much of a comparison between the Patriots and Panthers. Everything leaning to the right side of your TV screen or your phone screen, for that matter. The four turnovers by the Panthers contributing mightily to the Patriots not only getting the win, but getting the cover at the end of the game. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.